Hello, and welcome to the episode 30 of my podcast. And so where do I even begin? I've been having such a strange uh, winter. I'm actually going through some sort of a uh, personal crisis, I think I would say, which I thought ended when the January ended, but but it kept going and I kept trying to figure out what's going on in my life. Well, on one hand, I'm really successful and I have a lot of things to be happy about. Basically, uh, my musical projects are quite successful. Uh, my album, uh, Ratu, which is my most successful album, has now over a uh, hundred, over a hundred thousand views on YouTube, which is uh, the first time I uh, went past a number like this, I think. And uh, my label is uh, running really well. The last couple of releases were quite successful, relatively successful, especially the last one, which we released uh, on March 1st, which is a compilation called Heavy Dub, a third volume already. And uh, it's amazing to me how popular it is. And uh, another amazing thing is that it's a free download, but as you know, when you download stuff on Bandcamp, you can choose to donate uh, an amount of money of your choice if you w- if you want. And uh, a quarter of all the downloads since the release day went together with uh, at least a donation of 50 cent, which to me is amazing. A quarter of all people, 25% of all people decided to donate at least a little bit. That's unbelievable, really, because when you think about how many artists there are and how many labels there are and they struggle to make any money and, and uh, you know, I guess hard work pays off, that's all I can say about that. But, yeah, it's it's amazing to me. So yeah, Heavy Dub. What's great about this uh, last edition of the Heavy Dub compilation is that a well-known dub and dub techno artist known as uh, Dublicator basically asked if he could participate in it himself. I wasn't looking for for any artists to contribute. Uh, What I do with this compilation is just I pick uh, tracks in a dub reggae roots kind of style from the releases that were released before and I put together this compilation but this time we have a few uh, original tracks because there there were artists that wanted to participate and one of them was Dublicator which is a you know awesome I love Dublicator and uh, he didn't contrib- contribute with a an original track though he made a remix of one of my tracks from my album uh, Rato um, because he liked this album so much and so he wanted to remix one of the tracks so you know great that's awesome so yeah so it's really weird you know on one hand all these great things are happening and on the other hand I'm going through this personal crisis and uh, I'm trying you know to understand and figure out what's happening exactly and uh, there are a few reasons you know why I'm not satisfied with uh, the life that I'm living at this moment and uh, one of the reasons is that I've 
I don't. Re- I already mentioned that in my previous po- uh, podcasts. Is one of the reasons that I'm in this crisis is that I'm not sure what is my next goal, what is the next step, what I'm going towards to. You know. Earlier, I, you know, I had a goal of uh, making a comfortable living and not having to work hard, and I've achieved that. And it was my main goal for many years, and now, now I don't have a big goal, and uh, and I didn't expect that. You think, you know, you you know, you sort of design your life in a way you want to live, and uh, I did that, and. And I thought this is going to be where I want to be, and and it turned out that that this is this is not where I want to be. I want to have challenges in life. I want to have difficulties and problems, and I want to reach for something. I want to go somewhere. You know, life has become too easy for me. I could just lay on a couch and hardly do any work with a laptop on my belly. And I would make enough money to pay my bills, you know, and to live without uh, any big problems. But this is not how I want to live my life at all. You know, I want to do something more meaningful than that. And uh, another reason why I'm going through this crisis is that I'm struggling to really, I'm struggling to have uh, close people in my life, you know. I have friends who I see occasionally and we talk a little bit. But I don't have people in my life who I could see regularly, regularly, and uh, and you know talk about things, you know, talk about what concerns me, and uh, and not only you know to talk about my problems or anything like that, but also to listen to someone, you know, to to just feel, you know, that I'm part of some group of people, you know. You know, because I'm just, I'm just basically living alone and occasionally meeting someone and talking to someone. And that's not satisfying to me as well, I think. Yeah, and I decided that my goal for the future is going to be, which is a vague goal, that's not, I want to, you know, my goal is to have more intimate relationships with people, you know. But um, that's a vague goal, you know. A goal has to be very defined. But maybe it's at least the direction I want to go. go uh, so, you know, at, I, at least that I was able to figure out. And it's... And this feeling, you know, of uh, being alienated, really, I really felt that when I was one at uh, my shows, and I was waiting for the time for me to begin to play, and uh, and I was just sitting and waiting, and, and it was a room full of people who know me, who, who follow my work, who who have at least heard my music before. And I felt so lonely in that room. You know, because... Yeah, these people know me, but... somehow I didn't feel like a part of this group. Because there's only so many, I guess relationships you can manage at once and and when there's a whole bunch of people 
in the room who would like to be your friends, then it's just overwhelming, it's impossible. So yeah. And when I, and you know, so th recently, th as I'm going through this, at times, I went back to uh, playing around with my music hardware. Which, you know, I recently I was thinking that I'm going to move away from hardware uh, completely because making music with a, a, laptop, a laptop alone, I feel, is like um, much more efficient, much more fast, you know, and much more cheap cheaper you know and uh, I just figure out that that's a much better way to uh, to be doing what I do and and so but just because I didn't I was bored and, and I had nothing to do I sort of picked up my Korg Electribe and Volker Bass and, and my Mini Brutes and I started playing around with uh, these devices just for fun and I've kind of realized that I forgot that making music is supposed to be fun you know it's it's not I was all ab about efficiency and productivity and making it work you know and, and making money and accumulating fan base and I was just so f super focused on success that I kind of forgot that the reason why I even began making music which is uh, having fun you know and it had, and you know when if I if I'm doing something about with music I don't necessarily have to end up with a proper track you know with album material you know I just can I can just sit down you know and mess around and have fun and when I do that you know I forget that I'm lonely and I forget that uh, I have no goal in life and I forget that <clears throat> my life is too easy you know when I'm making music you know I'm being myself and uh On the other hand, you know, you could think that this is sort of an escape, you know, from life, from 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 my problems. But but you know, music is my calling, and uh, and my whole body and mind, you know, when I do that, is signaling to me that yeah, this is it, man. This is what you're supposed to do. And I remember when I was 14 years old and I was making music with a computer at our apartment. No internet, you know. Just uh, got some s software from uh, pirated uh, CDs from a market, you know, sold from under the table, you know. Because that's that's the only way we had access to to software or, or video games or movies, anything, all of that. And uh, and I was making tracks. And after I'm done making a track, I would listen to it, and I enjoy I would enjoy it so much. And not because it was a great piece of music, not at all. You know, back then I wasn't that good. But I just enjoyed the fact that I made this, that this is my creation. And here it is, and I can listen to it, and I can show it to other people. I didn't think about making albums, selling tracks. You know, I, it wasn't for YouTube. It was just for me, for my own fun, you know. 
and I'm kind of uh, and I've forgotten about that and I'm sort of getting back to that you know just uh, enjoying myself and so I know that I uh, spoke negatively about using hardware recently but now that I'm thinking about just having fun and hardware is fun it's it's like you know let's be honest it's like having toys you know and so I I started of thinking about uh, thinking about of buying some new gear you know just to just to so I could enjoy myself you know just to have fun Because, you know, what am I going to do with the money that I make? I don't have kids. You know, I eat well. I pay my bills. What am I going to do with the rest of my money? I live only, you know, for myself. Until I have kids, which I hope will happen at some point in my life. But for now, you know... What am I going to do? Just keep gaining more money? So that doesn't make sense. So uh, so I decided I'm going to buy a new piece of gear every now and then for my own enjoyment. And, and you know, maybe it will result in uh, something great, you know. Maybe I will make some great stuff with it. Which will lead to more success, perhaps. Who knows? So what I'm looking at at the moment is I'm thinking of buying um, the Be- Behringer Model D synth, you know, which is a a kind of a clone of the Moog Model D synth, a classic one. So I'm looking at that, but but I would like to buy the Behringer Neutron more than the Model D because Neutron has a big patch bay. It's semi-modular, which is which is really cool. You know, it opens up so many <clears throat> uh, possibilities in sound experimentation. But none, none of these two synths are available to buy yet. You know, you can pre-order Model D if you want. And who knows when it will be uh, shipping, because it's supposed to be shipping already, but it's still not. Something is not right with the distribution at Behringer, I guess. I don't know. And uh, Neutron is not officially available yet, so I'm waiting uh, for that. Which should it should be available soon. At least that what uh, that's the official statement from Behringer. But we'll see how it goes. So yeah, I'm looking to c- these two, and uh, I think I will get one of them pretty soon. Anyway, uh, there is uh, a result of playing uh, with hardware from me. Uh, I made a video for YouTube where I'm performing an ambient track with Electribe Sampler and Walker Bass. And I posted it on my Patreon page. So check out my Patreon page. You will find the video. It's open for everyone and enjoy it and enjoy the heavy dub compilation on my label Coltia Records so yeah just go to coltia.com and you will find it if you're interested in that heavy dub is the most successful project on my label so you totally should check it out yep so I've been talking for 20 minutes I guess that's 
enough for today. You know, I'm feeling better already that I've uh, expressed myself. This is, you know, I've said that before during this podcast. It's kind of therapeutic. Maybe if I had someone to talk to, then I I didn't have to uh, do this podcast. But uh, I hope that uh, at least this podcast is something interesting to listen to uh, for you. So see you again soon.